there's a distinction between those who are part of the system and those who are not. Clearly, the central bankers have kept the majority of individuals out of the loop and simply act based on their own best interests. Right now, we are seeing the financial system pumped up with fiat currency, but what good is it? The economy is falling and not even deep negative interest rates will help it recover. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to look at what is actually happening in the economy. I'm going to show you the economic statistics that you need to know, so let's get into it right away. There is a massive amount of leverage in the system, more than we have ever seen in history. Here you can see what's going on with the S&P 500, that's the green line, and then we match that up precisely with the global money supply. We have seen the expansion of money on every level. We're talking about what the central banks produce. We're talking about what the commercial banks are loaning out to people. It is expanding with the derivatives and all other forms of money or currency or debt however you want to look at it there is an expansion that is going on something isn't expanding in fact it's declining and we'll get more into that in a second but essentially what we have right now is a debt-based system that is being fueled by what central bankers are doing. They have interest rates at record lows. They're bringing them down even further. And of course, it's not going to stop anytime soon. Look how accurate the global money supply and the S&P 500, or you could take it more broadly with the U.S. stock markets, go even further. Look at the world stock markets. And although there are blips, although there are times in which it doesn't really line up in general these two are very accurate the more money they print the more money they loan out the more stocks will rise when you have the drying up of liquidity that central banks do on occasion you have stocks that fall this seems like a ridiculous notion why not just let it expand forever and ever well why did 2008 happen why did 2000 happen why did every crash before happen it's because they are trying to purposely in intentionally create a crisis in order to profit from it to exact more control over the population but most people can't look into it all they see are fang stocks they invest they don't know they don't want to know and that's just the way it is normalcy bias is a very very powerful thing S&P 500 valuations borders denote metrics trading above their historical average. Look down this list. My goodness, it is insane to see the P.E. ratios keep going down. You see their earnings. We're seeing basically all different types of indicators and ratios and so on that are well, well above their historical averages. OK, only a few of them are actually below right now. So if you want to pause this or you want to look in the description, and get the links for the sources, you can do so. But other things that we have talked about before, like the Schiller PE ratio, anything here basically just shows you that we have gone well above the norm. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean, okay, now we're above the norm. That means a crash is going to happen. No, absolutely not. But in general, when we find ourselves above what we have seen previously, and all these indicators like the yield curve and like all these other things that start matching up, it starts to really become gloomy out there and that's what people need to understand no you don't just keep buying the dip because the stock had been going up previously you need to take those warning signs you need to see what the fund managers the multi-billion dollar fund managers not the seven share fund managers these people here been through the cycles they know what's going on historically they were in the business 30 40 years ago and they have seen it progress some of them are very bad and still in the business but others there have been good decades after decade and what do they do well they start to change their mentality when things are getting towards the end of a cycle they don't simply just keep piling on that is not wise I wanted to show you something here. Look at the black line. That's the MSCI World Stocks Index. Okay, so we are going well above where we were before 18 months ago. It just started to break through that point. It took 
quite a while actually despite all of the record stimulus the low interest rates to get back to where we were previously but anyway regardless here you can see this in comparison to the Citigroup global earnings revision index so while we have the earnings that are not necessarily looking good at this time we have seen the stocks going to record highs there's a great disparity in between the two here we're gonna see how this earnings season comes out and how it looks on paper because so far it is looking quite scary for a lot of these companies that have been providing some insight not looking good but of course we will only see after it happens this is a report out of the biz. You know, I like to read these reports from the biz, from the IMF, from the other supranational organizations, because it gives me some insight as to what they are thinking. They tend to point out some very good things that have to pique my interest at times. Now, I don't like their solutions. I don't like what these organizations do in general, but at least I can find from a high level source what they are looking at. Inflation risks. The first is, does the expansion of central bank balance sheets risk creating inflation? A preliminary answer is, quote, not necessarily. And I wanted to bring you some humor here. You know, this was actually from a few years ago, but I thought it would be very relevant to what we are seeing today. They are suggesting that printing excessive amounts of money in the trillions upon trillions of dollars in a few year span does not create inflation. Well, first of all, we have to define what inflation is the proper definition of inflation is the expansion of the money supply the effect of which is that you see certain prices increase now you might be looking at for example let's just say your food prices and in some areas maybe the food prices really haven't gone up much but we can take it in a more generalized notion okay we could look at other things in general what you were spending 50 years ago what you're spending today I assure you it's more Vehicles cost more, houses cost more, electricity costs more, gasoline costs more. Everything costs more over a period of time. But why? Is it really a different material? Is bread really different than it was a hundred years ago? The stuff today is actually quite garbage in comparison to a hundred years ago, but let's just pretend it wasn't. You can see that it's still bread, okay? A loaf of bread is a loaf of bread. Managed over that period of time, you can see the price increases. And while it does fluctuate, obviously, you you could just see that take a basket of different items that you would have purchased and so on when they talk about this it's just good for a laugh now they have created this instability they have decided to print more money and then where it goes well you can't necessarily control that that's what the central bankers are unable to do they have the system set up and it's funneled in certain ways that make it profitable for all these people out there that are their friends and so on however when you look at it on a deeper level it's simply going to places that are not very fortunate for those in let's say the bottom half of individuals in the population but more likely the bottom 80 percent okay so you're looking at tuition rising you're looking at food prices electricity energy prices and everything else that people need to buy into on a regular basis they are simply finding themselves with less and less of the disposable income that's a huge problem this right here from the biz report, you know, I do think it's important to check it out. If you want to go to the link in the sources and read it for yourself, definitely worth the read. This is the one thing that I wanted to touch on. It is so important to understand the velocity of money. You can print money, you can give out loans, and you can try and get people to spend. Ultimately, it's up to that consumer. It's up to that business in order to actually make the money move. Are you finding that consumers are buying? Are businesses investing? Are they developing new buildings and new facilities and new products and so on? the money has to keep moving remember currency needs to have current okay that's where it comes from and if it's not moving then it's basically worthless that's the way this monetary system works it's built on debt and it needs to keep moving if it's under your mattress that's very bad for them now right now you can see over these years I can drag this actually to a point at which let's say over the last few years and just look at this since the financial crisis the velocity of money has slowed down considerably 
said rudely. There's excuses all across the board for why this is happening. I really don't care. I just look at it as a simple matter of fact. There is something very different going on since the financial crisis and nobody in the financial system wants to admit it. We're talking about a zombie. It's a corpse. It's dead. And here we are pretending that it's alive. It's like weekend at Bernie's all over again. Really quickly, I got to move through these now. We're looking at the IIF, new global debt monitor. Global debt hits $246 trillion in the first quarter of 2019. That is nearly 320% of GDP. This is insane to see how far this has come. The debt is expanding and it will create a huge catastrophe, not because it's really big, not because it's growing bigger, but because of the derivatives that are attached to it and when they start to unravel, everything will come with it. Nothing will be spared. Out of the Financial Times, debt in developing economies hits all-time high. This is a really detailed report. It shows you a few charts in here. I'll get into those in just a second. But essentially, we're talking about that same piece of information. Looking at this, emerging market debt has risen to a new high. No, I'm not repeating myself. It just continuously goes to a new high. It's unbelievable. So we're looking at households, government, financial corporates, non-financial corporates. Everything is expanding. And that should not be a surprise to anybody because of what we have have seen previously. Now, there have been times in history where this has some small, I'm talking small level of contraction, and it almost collapses the entire system. That's how weak it is. That's how unbelievable this system really is at this time. Corporate debt in emerging markets has surged ahead of that in developed markets. So we are watching right now a big change that is happening, and this is not good. This is not a good thing when you see that expansion because there are risks associated with it. It. And of course, we're going to find out in the next financial crisis, which domino falls first. The ECB, this is, I'm going to finish this video. The ECB has hired Elizabeth McCall, a former Goldman Sachs banker who later led an audit at the Vatican scandal ridden bank as one of the top banking supervisors. Oh, that's great. Let's just have this individual here, probably the, you know, one of the biggest insiders based on the fact that she was at the Vatican and Goldman Sachs. I mean, the, they pretty much are running everything in the US government, Goldman Sachs right now. This is unbelievable to see who's actually there as the watch. Dog. You can't have this and actually create a stable balance system. My goodness. I'm going to end it there. No ranting for today. I can't go any further. That's all. If you found that informative, please give me a thumbs up. Remember, all you have to do to support this channel is click one button. That's all I'm asking. I know I don't ask for too much. Just click one button. Thank you very much. If you want the financial education you were not taught in school, these two books have everything you need from top to bottom, from A to Z, the foundation, the history, the asset classes, how to make money. All the details are in the link. Click the link to go over there if you want the audiobook that's available at themoneygps.com. If you want to know what's going on in the financial system, you definitely want to watch this video. I broke it down for you. Click on it and I will see you there.